Hello, here on Thursday, November the 7th. Uh, this is going to be kind of a different kind of day, I guess, um, in some ways, because I was digging through today's box, and I was brought back to a conversation I had with my friend Nick, who used to be in Nick's video diaries a long time ago. Um, what is a horror movie? Because he was saying that, like, um... I mean, it, it's, it's, I mean, I guess there's murder, there's mystery, there's, you know, uh, people are in danger kind of thing, and he was trying to put things like thrillers, and I can, I can understand how that would be under the, the horror umbrella, as he put it. Um, so I, I, going through today's box <laughs> of movies, I was brought back to that conversation because a lot of the movies in the box that I had were all what would be considered thrillers. I would necessarily consider them thrillers. But then I thought to myself, isn't that kind of what misery is? And I added that to my list, you know, without even thinking. It's kind of like, oh, this is a horror movie. But then, like, I get to things like the ones that I had today, um, which is this whole list of things right here. Uh, quite a big, a big, big stackio of things. You know, and I'm like... You know, I, I, I even had to look up what the um, the general consistent consist the general consensus was on Silence of the Lambs. Is this a horror movie? Because you have your psycho, you know, Anthony Hopkins, and this might have been the movie Nick and I were discussing a long time ago. And they also have Hannibal here. Um, but that's what I was thinking. It's kind of like, well, misery. Is kind of I guess it's people put it put in kind of dangerous situations kind of thing, because um, I mean he definitely was, and it's like I, I guess um, so today is going to be more about thrillers than, which as my friend Nick put it is somewhere somewhere underneath the horror umbrella, um, because you know they they're supposed to put you in suspense they're supposed to you know terrify you or, or you know what's going to happen to these people, you're, you're concerned for their well-being, and blah, 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 like you're concerned for, you know, Jodie Foster, and blah, 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 blah. It, it's got mystery, it kind of maybe fucks with your head a little bit, maybe a little bit. Um, so that's why, and I mean, this is an iconic movie character who I think is always put in kind of the horror genre, um, even though it's a thriller, um, because he eats people, you know, they have to go f to one, uh, you know, one psycho to stop another, you know, basically. Um, I remember this, this, you know, oh, excuse me. It was, it was entertaining enough. I don't really remember Hannibal at all. Um, I think he eats somebody's brain, and that, because they, they were talking about some really super disgusting scene, a uh, spoiler alert, I suppose. And he's like eating somebody's brain straight out of their head or whatever. And I'm kind of like, I don't know. I guess I'm desensitized to too much. I did put at the top of my list, this is, if, if you're only here for horror and you don't care about thrillers, I went ahead and put Boogeyman, Boogeyman 2, sorry, Boogeyman 2 at the top here when I found this in my VHS collection. Um, and it says, a little girl witnessed a murder in the reflection of her mirror. As an adult, that image haunts her day and night. She says she sees the boogeyman. In an attempt to free her life from the past, the mirror is destroyed, but one shard of it remains to wreak havoc wherever the woman goes. The events climax when the shard embeds itself in the hand of a man who becomes possessed by the boogeyman, and a bloody trail of bodies are left in his path. So, 1983. This might be more considered a horror movie because there's supernatural elements to it, there's, but there again, it's, you know, somebody in danger, I guess, kind of, that's a thriller, um, kind of thing. Oh, I don't even know where you open this, it's all closed. You open it from the side, look at that, you open it from the side. That's fancy, right? It's got a sticker. <laughs> that was kind of a weird one. It's like, oh, you open it from the side. Okay. 
So that it, it, at least it has some kind of supernatural, kind of otherworldly kind of terror danger to it. Um, so this is more what I guess I would consider a horror movie, but you know that doesn't make me right. I suppose there's a lot of different opinions out there about this sort of thing. Um, like, um, well, let me do this, like these two first to give you more of an idea. Um, I, I went ahead and put the skulls in here because this is Jonathan Jackson. He goes to like a prestigious college and gets involved in like this underground kind of, you know, uh, secret society kind of thing. And then, you know, he finds out some of them are doing some bad things. And then he has to, um, you know, he gets caught up in a murder, is what it says on here. Uh, Luke finds himself alone amidst, amidst this sinister and well-connected brotherhood, and now he must summon the strength to stand up against the um, immeasurable odds. You know, so he's put in this precarious situation where, you know, there is danger, there is, so I mean, there's suspense, and that's, you know, what I've said about some of these other horror movies is, you know, there's danger, there's suspense, you know, so... Shouldn't something like this, shouldn't a thriller be kind of considered, even though there's no supernatural elements to it, and maybe there's not necessarily, maybe that's the, where the line is drawn, there's not like a killer that's involved the whole time, like maybe these are more drama kind of things. Um, I also have The Glass House with Lily Sobieski in here, and um, <clears throat> her, their, her and her brother, their parents get killed in a car crash. Um, and then they're they're taken in by um, an old friend of the family, and it turns out that he you know maybe he has something to do with what happened to the parents and whatever and blah blah blah. So there's kind of a little mystery, and then you know they're you know uh, living living or sleeping with the enemy so to speak. As I also have sleeping with the enemy in this list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so there's like a there's like a sense of danger here to where it's kind of like you know is she is she living with someone is she safe whatever be careful who you trust it even says that on the front um, and then this you know sleeping with the enemy um, I seem to remember a scene in this one where is this is this the movie where um, she has her towels a specific way and then she goes into the bathroom and the towels are messed up. So uh, th that might actually be the scene on the front here because obviously she's in the bathtub on the front of here, and like she 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 gets up and she puts her towels the way she wants them, and then the next time she looks at them they're messed up again. So it's like somebody's you know in the house currently, like the call is coming from inside the house. Um, in this suspenseful romantic thriller, ooh, uh, Julie Roberts stars as Laura, a young woman who thinks she's found the man of her dreams, but after they are married. Laura discovers the real Martin, compulsive, controlling, and dangerously violent. Faking her own death, Laura starts life over in a small Midwestern town, but even with a new identity, Laura's, Laura lives in fear, stalked by the memory of Martin's brutality, a memory that comes terrifyingly to life when Martin discovers she is still alive. So it's kind of like, you know, he he's our, he's our bad guy, he's our, you know, ghost face, or our Michael Myers, or our Freddy Krueger. You know, he's our, you know, even though they haven't made, you know, a dozen movies about him, like, still, he's our, he's our bad guy, he's our evil, he's our evil dude, you know, and he, you know, there's, there's kind of some creepy moments, like Minxie playing with her toy, thank you <laughs> for that, at that exact moment, um, you know, there's kind of some creepy moments, some kind of, like, suspenseful, like, is he gonna get her, is he gonna get her? You know, where is he? Is he hiding in the house? Blah, 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 blah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, thrillers, I think, you know, even though I believe at the time uh, I tried to disagree with Nick that thrillers were their own genre, and, you know, he was, like he said, he they were under the horror banner, uh, or under the horror umbrella, as he said. Uh, I can kind of see his point now when I'm kind of, you know, I was brought back to that conversation and how, you know, uh, maybe I was a little misinf misinformed, or maybe, you know, hadn't hadn't quite thought it through all the way. But I can see where, you know, thinking back on it, like, you know, thrillers could be considered under the horror umbrella because of things like that, you know? And then we have um, a must-see thriller, A True Ten, and I believe I mentioned this already once, Michael Douglas in The Game. This is a fucked up movie. Because it's kind of, and that, that's, well, you know, it's kind of one of those things, like, 
is he dis you know I mean not really is he descending into madness but like you're not sure what's real and what's not and what's you know what's really happening and what's part of the game and what you know is happening because of the game starting blah 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 this 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 is a if you have not seen the game I highly suggest this one highly 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 suggest this one because it's one of those movies the first time you, I believe my uh, cousin Katrina uh, described it as you know like especially the first time watching it through you, you're like you're not sure what's going to happen you know and you're not sure what's happening why and blah 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 because it's just like it's just like all over the place it's kind of like you never know what's going to happen next and that kind of thing because there are no rules in the game and you just lost the game I'm sorry I'm sorry and that will make life very difficult for Nicholas Van Orton Michael Douglas a shrewd and successful businessman who is always in control. Well-bred and established, Van Orton lives an, lives an ordered life until an unexpected birthday gift from his brother Conrad, Sean Penn, destroys it all. Like it or not, Nicholas has been enrolled in a game, a profound life experience that begins quietly but soon erupts in a confusing maze of devastating events. Terrorized by forces who seem intent on dismantling all that he has built, Van Orton has to win this deadly game or lose control of everything in his life. This joyride of a film is nothing like you've seen before. A wild blast from director David Fincher, the force behind Seven and Alien 3. Praised by critics and audiences across the world, it will sweep you up in the mystery, the challenge, and the ultimate terror of the game. See, he's even talking to a mannequin kind of thing on the back here. You know, and it's kind of one of those things like, once again, who can you trust? You know, his brother enrolls him in this game, you know, but is it, is it you know, some evil, deadly society, like, coming to, you know, take all of his riches from him? Is it, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of, like I said, more thrillers than horrors. Because, <clears throat> like, there's no supernatural forces. There's no necessarily, like, stalker, you know, hiding in the bushes or whatever. You know, where are they? Are they going to get you whatever, um, maybe like this one, The Watcher, which stars, um, not Lily Sobieski, um, Neo, I was trying to do it without looking, but I can't, Keanu Reeves, thank you very much, front of the box, <laughs> uh, and he even plays a killer in this one, and it's like, uh, is it kind of like the Bone Collector, kind of one of those things, um, after years of pursuing psych psychotic killers in Los Angeles, FBI agent Joel Campbell, once out, and now his nemesis, serial killer David Ann, D David Allen Griffin, <clears throat> not David Allen Greer, that would be a completely different movie, has tracked him all the way to Chicago just to torment him. Before each murder, Griffin sends Campbell a photograph of his intended victim and dares him to find her before he strikes again. <clears throat> now with every tick of the clock and amidst pulse-pounding action, the Stone Cold Killer Turns Up the Heat. I don't know, I guess when I was reading the description for this one, it kind of maybe reminded me a little bit of Saw. You know, so Saw is considered horror, but, I mean, yeah, I guess there's a lot of blood and gore with with Saw as well, but it might fall more under, you know, the thriller banner than it would necessarily the horror, you know. I don't know, it's just kind of one of those... I, I can see now how they are very tightly linked. That was part of what, well, and of course I fell asleep. But it was like, I was trying to figure out, I'm like, are these movies horror? Should I put them under, in my horror movie collection? And uh, I, I can I can, I can, can see where, you know, they're a, a very close, you know, maybe not a sibling, but, a, you know, a very, a first cousin, maybe, of the horror movie genre. Um, and I also have dis dis Domestic Disturbance. In this edge-of-your-seat thriller, John Travolta stars as Frank Morrison, a man who discovers that his son's new stepfather is not who he pretends to be. Frank's investigation into this man's past explodes into a terrifying mission to rescue his son from the ultimate danger. This chilling, critically acclaimed hit will have your heart pounding from start to finish. Um, and there again, if I, wa you know, if I watch this, I don't really remember... Um, I know I watched Sleeping with the Enemy, Glass House Skulls, um, I watched the, the, the Hannibal movies, and that kind of thing. I guess they're all entertaining in their own right. But, and I definitely remember Fear, um, and I remember this not being as, um, 
that's just the thing with putting the, of course, this is a, this is a thriller, you know, because, um, what's her name, uh, Legally Blonde gets involved with, Reese Witherspoon gets involved with, uh, Mark Wahlberg, um, and of course he, he turns out to not be who, uh, she thinks he is and blah, 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 you know, and the dad, I, I specifically remember the dad trying to, like, you know, get her to stay away from him, and she's like, I'm not gonna stay away from him, because I'm a teenager and I'm stupid, you know, and I love him, you know, and then, of course, he turns out to not be the greatest guy ever, um, so there, there again, you know, he's, he's like, he's like our, you know, our Norman Bates, our Freddy Krueger, he's our, he's our, you know, our bad, our bad, bad guy doing bad, bad things in this, and there's a sense of, you know, terror, fear, like, you know, uh, what's going to happen? Is is she going to get away from him? Blah, 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 that kind of thing. So, um, this, this was an entertaining watch. I will say, I kind of remember, um, it, it kind of, there's a lot of maybe teenage love to it, and it's kind of like, I, I guess maybe they spend a little bit too much time on, you know, is she in danger and kind of blah, 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 blah. And it, it takes a while for, you know, him to, like, eventually, like, flip out, I guess, or whatever, and start doing these bad things, but it's kind of like, there's, there's, like, this sense of danger throughout the entire, throughout the entire film. I think it just takes a little bit too long to get to the payoff of all of that, if I remember correctly with this one, um, but it's definitely, like, you know, there comes a moment where it's kind of like, okay, what's going to happen, and, you know, is everyone going to be okay? Is everyone going to be safe? Whatever, blah, 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 blah. So I, I would still say, even though maybe it was, a, you know, the payoff takes a little while to get there. <laughs> Once it's there, I suppose it's worth it. Um, so I would say Fear fear was definitely worth a watch. It's kind of like Swim Fan, um, which I used to have a copy of, but I guess I don't anymore because I never found it. Um, but yeah, it was kind of one of those that was kind of the same thing. Um, she was like a fan of, you know this swimmer guy in, in, uh, in her high school or whatever, so she kind of, like, starts stalking him and whatever and blah, 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 blah. Um, kind of the same setup, you know. And then we have Insomnia. Oh, no, I have five minutes of taping time left. Uh, crime never sleeps, neither does veteran L LAPD homicide detective Will Dormer. Invited to Night Mute, Alaska, to head a murder case, Dormer finds his investigation disrupted by an ever-shining midnight sun that wrecks sleep deprivating havoc on his body clock and by a and by a nagging sense of personal guilt over a second crime that may be real or a figment of Dormer's increasingly unstable unconsciousness so see that that's kind of one of those things that kind of reminded me of like I was talking about magic the other day you know with the ventriloquist puppet like is this ventriloquist puppet actually talking to Anthony Hopkins or is he just imagining it all like there's kind of that kind of thing and it's kind of like I don't know um but yeah, this this has Al Pacino, Robin Williams, and Hilary Swank in it, so it's got a pretty good cast, and it sounds like an interesting enough setup, I suppose, um, but I can't recall if I ever watched that one or not. Um, I'll save that one for last, because I, I've definitely seen that one. And I think I saw this one, too, Don't Say a Word, uh, because this has um, the girl that died, right? Brittany Murphy. Michael Douglas is tremendous in this ingenious, smart, and satisfying thriller. As he heads off to enjoy Thanksgiving with his family, a prominent New York psychiatrist is recruited to examine a deeply disturbed young woman, Elizabeth Brittany Murphy. The next day, his daughter is kidnapped by thieves who want him to pry a six-digit number from Elizabeth's troubled mind or they will kill his daughter. With surprising plot twists in the classic Hitchcock tradition... See, that's what, Hitchcock is considered horror, right? Even though his movies maybe didn't have ghosts or ghouls or goblins or, you know, critters in them, um, he's still considered horror, right? Like Psycho. Psycho's considered horror because you have this person who's fucked in the head doing fucked things. Um, this chilling, suspenseful film with an all-star cast will leave you on the edge of your seat, you know. So... I guess you can add that one in there. And since I have two minutes of taping time left, I'm just going to whip out The Good Son. This one was definitely interesting, worth a watch. It has Macaulay Culkin and a young uh, Elijah Wood in it, who is the who is the good kid, you know, um, and the good son, because this one is kind of one of those where um, 
the parents think he can do no wrong. Oh, our son's just fine. Our son's just fine. But Elijah Wood is spending time with him, um, and he's finding out that the good son is maybe not that good of a person in general. Uh, he's a little fucking psycho. <laughs> Possibly. There was a movie uh, uh, many years later called The Orphan, which was with a little girl. Um, that was kind of like a female version of The Good Son, I remember, I recall. Uh, evil resides in an unexpected place in this gripping, suspense-filled drama. Macaulay Culkin stars as Henry, an angelic-looking boy who seems loving and loyal to his parents, sisters, and friends. Only his cousin Mark, Elijah Wood... Uh, sees what lurks behind Henry's smile, secret thoughts, and a love of deadly games. But when Mark tries to warn Henry's family, they won't believe him, leaving the terrified youngster alone to battle his jealous, menacing cousin. You know? So, yes, I know. I'm out of taping time. You're fine. Just blink a little bit. Um, the film... Oh. Yeah, we won't say that. <laughs> it's just a little hint about, or it's just a little uh, director's note about the movie, but it's about the film's climax. So we won't say that. We won't say anything about that. Let's see here again, you know, uh, you know, a psych, a kind of uh, maybe person who's a little bit demented, doing demented things, and then it's kind of like, you know, are they going to, you know, is, is, is are people going to believe them in time? Like, you know, every fucking ghost movie ever, you know, like, oh, it's just the pipes, it's just the pipes, and all the time people are dying, and they're like, it's the pipes, the pipes are killing people, they're making noise, and they're killing people, you know, it's kind of like, you know, who's going to believe them, is anyone going to believe them in time, kind of thing, you know, that kind of suspenseful kind of, you know, is everything going to be okay, um, and maybe it is, maybe it's not, who knows, that's a very tall uh, version of movies, so yes, that's more what I guess I would consider thrillers, Excuse me. So tomorrow, uh, um, we're almost done. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to be able to do two more. So I can, I'm going to get it like a full 25 uh, movie, <laughs> 25 videos out of this series. And thank you for all those who have been watching this entire time, because it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Um, but yeah, so I'll try to get more horror, like <laughs> horror movies tomorrow, the next couple days. Uh, but we'll see what's in those drawers over there in the next two days. And, uh, I mean, <clears throat> I don't usually ask for comments, but feel free to, you know, let me know. Because <clears throat> I'm, I'm interested in this topic now that I've been thinking about it. <clears throat> like, do you consider thrillers horror movies, or are they kind of like their own genre, kind of their own, you know, because you've got, like, your action kind of movies? Are they, do you consider them, like, suspense, or... Like, where's the line? That's what I've been trying to figure out for myself. Like, where's the line between what I consider a horror movie and, like, a thriller movie? You know, even though, I mean, they have a lot of the same intertwining elements. But anyway, uh, this is going to cut me off if I don't shut the fuck up. And I will see you for what to see you.